And karma yogis also uh, have an intention, uh, and they but they don't expect a result. But their intention is a little different uh, than the uh, attention of doers. Do, doers act to make themselves feel happy, but but karma yogis act what to make God happy. <laughs> Now, Probably the question will be, well, uh, I didn't think God was uh, was uh, sad or needed to be made happy. God is already happy. Well, actually, God's not happy or sad. Um, it's just a figure of speech this, this to, intended to make God happy. What, what does that mean? That means to, it means to make yourself happy by what? taking care of that part of you that's generating the results of your actions. And so by making God happy, you make yourself happy. But and, and rather than, than looking for happiness directly for your own self, you please the field. God is the field in which you act. And so if you act with a reverential spirit, if you actually dedicate to God, say, you know, you gave me life. I really appreciate it. I mean, you gave me this body and this capacity to act, you gave, uh, and I'm going to like dedicate these actions to you. That's a karma yogi. And then, and mm -hmm. and the other side, of course, is what is is taking the results of that the, the actions as what as a gift from God. In other words, you make yourself happy when you uh, when you make God happy, right? So, and use your free will to actively participate in life. That's all we're asking. That's all Rama's saying. Worship is participating uh, in, in a in a generous spirit, offering your actions to the world. It means people around you, to your situation, whatever it is. God's just your situation. And uh, you, taking that result as prasad, well, if you don't, if you don't act, what you're going to act anyway? What, how are you going to act? Your vasanas will just what? Uh, create an action based upon what you did before. So you'll just revert to your default, and and you'll just act out old patterns. In other words, you'll reinforce the effects of your ignorance. And by reinforcing the effects of ignorance, you, in your mind, you reinforce a subconscious mind, in your unconscious, you reinforce ignorance itself. So that whole idea of not acting because you're not going to get, you know, because God's doing the action is totally bogus. In other words, this reinforcing your vasanas, how, how do you? How do you get away from that? Well, you 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 see that you you take whatever you get as as prasad. Prasad means as a gift from God, and and that's fine with the stuff that you want. But what about this, the stuff that you don't want? Uh, so you what do you do with that? Well, you you show the same gratitude for the, you know the the wax that you get get from God as you do from the gifts that you get from God. Why? Because God's teaching you what? How to conform to Dharma. God is Dharma. Dharma's done is the king of Dharma. It's the one that enforces Dharma. It means it's the authority that enforces Dharma. And if and God wants you to be in harmony with Dharma, what? Because God doesn't want you suffering. And God knows very well that when you go against your nature and or or the nature of the situation, the field around you, your environment, then what you're going to suffer, because because you because you know Swami Dayananda said, rub against God and God rubs against you, and that's not fun. That that's not something you want. So karma yogis are what people that want to please God, because it's impossible that you can control. The results of your action. So, and because uh, you know, you the thing about God is you can't see it, smell it, taste it, touch it, or feel it. 
Uh, in other words, it can't be objectified. So the only way you can get to see God or know God is what? To remove the mental and emotional coverings that, uh, that obscure it. So God seems to originate from within us. Like, like if you say, where's God? If you watch, you ask somebody, where's God? You know what, what they'll do right away? They'll point here. Right? Now, they're actually pointing to the body. But what they mean is there's something inside the body, means subtler than the body, that's making the body act. So, it, so God, it, they think that God uh, originates from within us and not outside us. Huh? Uh, even though what? It's also outside if there's an inside. See the dualistic thing, the zero sum, see the zero sum uh, reality operating here? If you say inside, there's only an inside, why? Because, uh, because of the concept of outside. Now, in this case, what, what's, the, what's the point of view that makes inside and outside? The body. If you take a stand in the body, now, and you point this way, then what? Then uh, you say God's inside, but uh, God's all pervasive. So God's got to be outside too. In other words, that notion is a helpful notion for somebody what? Who's totally extroverted, or just what you see, seek within, but what? It's not, it's only what? A provisional truth that needs is going to, going to be what? Dismissed later on when when what? When you get to jnana yoga, when you get to Vedanta. Is experienced instantly or constantly as what? A steady stream of bliss or joy. In other words, it's just the joy of life, the joy of being, the happiness that the happiness of I am. It's, and what is it? And, and what is that, how does that come, how does that manifest as knowledge? It's what? It, it proves that I exist in, independently from the continuous flow of discrete experiences that present themselves to me. Here, here's a partial misconception this gentleman, this gentleman had. This peaceful, joyous sense of being can be felt right here now provided the thoughts are stilled. Now, is that true? Think about that. This is a good, this is good meditation. This is good uh, um, sadhana. He says, he says, this peaceful, joyous sense of being can be felt right here and now, provided the thoughts are still now what? He's putting a condition on that, isn't he? He's saying that joy, this is the same problem you have in the Patanjali Yoga Sutras in, in in the third third verse, uh, the second verse, there's a conditional, the appearance of God or the experience of God is what? Conditional on what? Getting rid of your vasanas, chitta vritti nirodha. So, uh, so he says, this peaceful, joyous sense of being can be felt right here, here and now, provided the thoughts are stilled. Now, why is that a partial misconception? Because it can also be felt when not thoughts are present. Why? Because it is the nature of the experiencing entity. You're going to see others yeah, quote. Well, it's, it's maybe it's not here. No, it is here later. Ram is going to say he's going to say a little later that quotation I put down below. He's going to say he said, "When are you not experiencing yourself?" So, you know, when you're miserable, you're experiencing yourself. Huh? And when you're joyful, you're experiencing yourself. So, uh, so it, uh, the experience of yourself is not uh, dependent upon what? On anything you can do, any conditions. So, it says, it is there because it's the nature of the experience entity all now, but remember, there's always a but. This is all. This zero sum thing is working in every sentence, in every statement, in every paragraph, in every what? Everything that happens in the all the time in the parent reality. But 
thoughts that generate strong emotions, what may, and they usually do, momentarily obscure what? Your experience of bliss, your experience of joy. Experience of yourself and thoughts is the experience of bliss and thoughts. <laughs> Now, here's a lovely example. I've used this before, and I, I keep using it. It's so, so, so beautiful and so elegant and so powerful and so, so revealing. It says, if a lit candle is placed in the center of a large, cold, dark room, the light from the candle right, travels to the walls. It, yeah, you can see the, the barrier, the walls, because light's going to 100 and what? 186,000 miles a second. So it, even though that's a big room, it doesn't even take you know a tiny fraction of a tiny fraction of a second for the light to uh, illumine the walls. But but the heat, what is that heat symbol of? The bliss clusters tightly around the flame. It's warm huh, right around the flame. So meaning what? Meaning what? When your turned, mind is turned within, huh, you feel the bliss. Now, there's, an, there's a point, point up to doing this, even though you're feeling it all the time, what is to what? To verify the teaching itself in your own experience. When the mind meditates exclusively on the self, the bliss is experienced in the mind, which is sentient, but it's not experienced in the body, which is sentient. You think it, it feels as if the body is, feels good, but that feel good is not coming from the body. It's coming from the subtle body, the mind. Beautiful, huh? However, if we do not focus on the results and pay attention only to what we're doing, then what? Extraneous thoughts, in other words, unnecessary thoughts, subside and one's natural peaceful state uh, appears. It may seem like a revelation. Oh my God, that's called an epiphany. And what? And it may be that uh, peaceful state, which is actually sattva guna, uh, that and uh, may be recognized as the stillness of the self awareness. It's best to put maximum effort doing the five daily karma yoga contributions. I avoided the word sacrifices because. You know, modern people run head for the hills when they hear the word sacrifice. So we'll call them contributions. Uh, put in maximum effort doing the five daily karma yoga contributions because they purify the mind and prepare it for Vedanta. In fact, karma yoga is what? Assuming what? The identity, of, a, a provisional identity is a karma yoga. And what? And fulfilling those five ritualistic actions every day. I'm not going to go into them now. You, you most of you know them, and those of you who don't, uh, look it up. It's uh, it's everywhere. It's all over Shining World and the Bhagavad Gita and every place else.